dialysis or renal replacement therapy involves some very simple principles of general chemistry that you probably heard about in high school. There are two forms of, hemo of dialysis. The most common is hemodialysis in which blood is pumped through a hollow fiber filter cartridge and dialysate is pumped around it and then clean blood is returned to the patient. The second form of dialysis is peritoneal dialysis. In this form, the membrane that is used is the capillary network that surrounds the bowels in the abdomen. A tube is placed into this space called the peritoneum. Fluid can be put in and out of the peritoneum through this tube and it can be used to remove waste products. The first chemical principle that dialysis works on is diffusion. Diffusion is passive movement of a substance down its concentration gradient. In the middle of the screen we have an illustration of a semi-permeable membrane. This would include any membrane in the body surrounding a capillary such as those in the peritoneum or the fiber in the cartridge for hemodialysis. On the left side we have blood and on the right side a dialysate. The concentration of chemicals within each of these fluids is shown in the far column. Basically we have excess sodium, potassium, and urea in the blood and we have less bicarbonate than we would like. We've constructed a dialysate that will help us adjust things in the direction we want them. As these substances move down their concentration gradient, we have an equilibration in which the concentration of all of them becomes equal in both compartments. So we reduced sodium, potassium, and urea in the blood while increasing the amount of bicarbonate. The substances then flow away and new blood and dialysate are pumped in again to repeat the process. Unfortunately, diffusion cannot be used to get rid of excess water and we all know that there's water. To get rid of water, we do what's called ultrafiltration, which is a type of convection. In convection, we remove water and it drags other molecules along with it. Convective clearance is dependent on a difference in pressure across the membrane. In the case of hemodialysis, we can put a physical negative pressure on the outside of the membrane that will help suck water across. In the case of peritoneal dialysis, we use osmotic pressure by putting lots and lots of glucose into the dialysate, which works to pull water out. As water moves across the membrane, it brings other stuff along with it, both the good and the bad, and then gets pulled away. So the net result is loss of fluid and whatever it contains. Between these two processes, we can adjust dialysis so that we pull off the amount of excess fluid a patient takes in during the day and adjust the chemistries in the blood to allow them to survive their kidney failure.